In this part of the lecture, we're going to fire up the text editor and rack up some keyboard time. We'll be implementing a simple open addressing hash table. We'll begin by including some header files for the functions we'll be using. Standardio.h includes the IO functions in the standard library. String.h includes some useful string related functions. And standardlib.h includes functions for allocating memory. Next, we'll define a macro for describing the size of our hash table. The right size depends on the number of keys and the desired hash table performance, but one bucket per key might be a good starting place. Notice that we choose to make the hash table size a power of 2. Next, we'll declare a structure that represents each record in our hash table. The structure, named hashrec, short for hash record, contains a pointer to a character string, which we'll use as the key for each record. However, it might be useful to associate additional data depending on your application. We could include something as simple as a Boolean value, a counter, or as complex as another data structure altogether. We'll try and keep it simple for now, but keep this in mind for the practice exercises. Next, we'll implement our hash functions. Recall that our hashing strategy is going to be double hashing. Our hash function has two parameters. K is a pointer to the character string, which will be the key, and I is the current hash attempt. We'll return the value h1 of k plus i times h2 of k. We want to make sure that the resulting hash value doesn't go past the end of the array, so the operation is done modulo hash tab. Next, we'll implement the h1 hash function. It takes a character string as an argument, and it returns the hash value for that character string. One simple and effective string hash function is to iterate through each character and add the character's value to the hash value computed so far. Here, C is a pointer to an unsigned character. In the C programming language, only printable characters are guaranteed to have positive integer values. Therefore, it's best to use the unsigned value for the characters when computing the hash. If dereferencing the C variable ever yields the null character, then the test condition in our for loop evaluates to false and the loop exits. The value 37 is a prime number that works well for hashing strings. h2 is a different hash function and it's similar to h1. It takes one argument, a pointer to a character string. Just like h1, we iterate through the characters and compute the hash, but I've used a different prime number than h1. Remember that the size of the hash table and the value that h2 returns must be co-prime. Before we return the computed hash, if the hash value is a multiple of 2, that is to say it's even, then we add 1 so that it becomes odd. Now we'll implement two operations on our hash table, insert and member. Insert will insert a new record into the hash table, and member will test if a certain key resides in the hash table. To make the implementation of both the insertion and member functions easier, we're first going to implement a helper function named locate. The locate function will help us by returning the index of the bucket associated with a given key, if it exists in our hash table. This helper function takes two arguments. The first is a hash table, and the second is a key. We'll declare two local variables, i and b. i is used to keep track of how many buckets we've probed, and b is used to store the current bucket address. The function scans the entire hash table, stopping if it finds either an empty bucket, or it finds a key that matches the k parameter, or when all the buckets have been probed. We can tell an empty bucket if its key value is null. To determine if we found the key k, we'll use the string comp function, short for string compare, which is declared in the string.h header. If the two strings given as arguments to the string comp function are equal, then the function returns 0. At the end of each iteration, we increment i. Therefore, when i is equal to hash tab, we know that we've checked all the buckets and the loop exits. The address of the first bucket where any of these three conditions occurs is returned. Now we're ready to implement the member function using the locate helper function. If the locate function returns the bucket address of an empty bucket, then the target key isn't in the hash table and we return 0. 
Otherwise, if the locate function returned the address of a non-empty bucket, then we check if the bucket key and our target key match. If they do, we return 1, otherwise we return 0. Next, we'll implement the insertion function. To insert a new record into the hash table, we'll need the address of the first empty bucket. Luckily, our locate function returns just that. If the locate function returns an empty bucket, then we'll make a copy of the target key and insert a new record by copying the target key into the bucket key. Remember that the memory allocated for this key should be deallocated with the free function, but for now I've left this part out. We'll return 1 to indicate that the insertion was successful. If, however, the locate function doesn't return an empty bucket, we test to see if our target key was already inserted into the bucket. If so, we return 1 as if the key was just now inserted. Otherwise, if the locate function returns a bucket that doesn't match our target key, then the hash table is full and we return 0 to signify that the insertion failed. Next, we'll implement the copy function we used in the insertion function. The copy function takes just one parameter, a pointer to a string. It then allocates enough memory to copy the given string. The amount of memory that needs to be allocated is equal to the number of characters in the string times the size in bytes of a character plus one extra space for the null character at the end of each string. We have to make sure that the function malloc was successful. If it was, then we copy the string into the newly allocated memory. Otherwise, we return null. Our final function is the init hash table function. This function takes a hash table as input and sets all the bucket keys to null. This way we can identify empty buckets within the hash table. We've now gone over implementations for the insert and member operations, but what about the delete operation? How do we remove a key and its associated record? Open addressing hash tables aren't well suited for the deletion operation, so if you need to support that operation, you should choose a different hash table implementation, particularly a chaining hash table. So be sure to check out that lesson. In the next lecture, we're going to be going over a simple algorithm to detect duplicate strings in an array. Until next time.